celebration of his life, but you know, sad occasion, obviously, but also a, a way for people to express their love and appreciation for who he was. And part of what you're saying, JJ, is uh, there's an officer there named Nicholas Dionysus. He's a New York police officer who basically travels across the country to put on white gloves and shake the hand of everybody who comes in. This is the beginning of a tradition around the country. JJ, uh, you're outside the chapel right now. And we actually talked to Nicholas. They are part of the Brotherhood of the Fallen. Last year, New York PD sent 200 officers to attend 61 funerals across the country. They also donated $40,000 to families of the fallen officers killed in the line of duty, as was Officer Boyer. He had a storied career with the Whittier Police Department. We talked about 27 years, but those were as a police officer. Before that, he worked as a dispatcher and a reserve officer. And during his career, he was not only a dispatcher, he was also a canine officer, specializing in narcotics detection with his faithful partner, Sam. And of course, he was much more than just a police officer. This man was a father, a son. His mother, Nancy, will be speaking at the funeral today. He's a dad to four, a proud grandfather of two beautiful little girls that sadly will not be able to grow up with their granddad. And Ch uh, Chief Piper of the Whittier Police Department, he was telling us that uh, Officer Boyer, who loved his job, loved working, never talked about retirement before, had recently brought the subject up. He was ready to spend some quality family time traveling and enjoying those two little granddaughters and the rest of his family and extended family. It is a large and united family. And then, of course, there is the Whittier family. A lot of folks here in Whittier wearing stickers that say, hashtag Whittier strong. And that is sort of the sentiment here. We are seeing once again a community coming together to honor a man who spent his entire career, we're talking about decades, protecting them and serving them up to the very minute he was shot shot dead in the line of duty because while we're celebrating his life we have to remember how he died and he died heroically because he was rushing to help a man he thought had been in a traffic accident he thought was a victim it turns out that that man now identified by police as michael mejia was actually a suspect in the murder of his own uncle just hours earlier and that car that had been in an accident here in whittier that was actually a stolen car it had been reported as a carjacking again hours earlier officer boyer of course had no idea he was just responding to a traffic accident and sometimes the media we say oh it was a routine call and Police officers will be the first to tell you there are no routine calls. Things can turn on a dime just like that. As for today's service, there are about 3,000 people here, including officers from around the country. We spoke to some from Chicago, from Texas, from all over, and of course, locally. Santa Ana PD has about 100 officers here, most of them working, I mean, dedicating their day off. They're not getting paid to be here. They just wanted to be here. And during the ceremony today, uh, Officer Boyer's mother, Nancy, will be speaking along with the Chief of Police, Jeff Piper, and Officer Mike Carson, a friend. The eulogy will be given by three of his children, Ashley, Joseph, and Joshua, and the song they have chosen for their father's funeral is Amazing Grace. And then there will be, and I can tell you it'll be probably one of the most em emotional moments for the officers here, those who knew Keith and those who didn't. And that is the end of watch uh, broadcast. That sort of officially ends someone's career. Usually you hope it's when they retire. Unfortunately for Officer Boyer, it is when he was killed in the line of duty. One of the many, many officers losing his life serving this community. He's a graduate of La Serna High School, and I mention that because a lot of high school alumni are also here today. He was a musician. He had a band. They played at a lot of charity and nonprofit events, and I'm told he was the first one to uh, bring toys to the annual Christmas drive at the Children's Hospital or to any other nonprofit event. Just a all around a good guy that will be remembered for being humble and we refer to him and you'll hear me refer to him off and on as simply Keith because that's what one of his friends and colleagues officer John Scoggins told me that in the Whittier PD the officers there they almost always refer to each other by their last name hey Boyer how are you but Keith he told me was different he didn't want anybody calling him officer or Boyer or anything like that he simply wanted to be known as Keith and that's how he is going to be remembered the funeral is set to get underway right now I see now. the badges out there you. I see heroes and we want to welcome you on behalf of the Boyer family on behalf of Chief Piper and the Whittier Police Department and on behalf of God himself 
We want to welcome you to this ceremony. There's a couple of things I want to make clear before I introduce my pastor who will come up and will share with an opening prayer. And they're very, very clear things that I think are important and critical for you to know and understand. Number one, I think the Boyer family would have you to know how important it is to understand a very simple fact. As you look at that casket right there, and as you ponder the difficulty of the fact that there is the body of Keith Boyer in that basket, in that casket, I want you to understand something. He is not in that casket. People that say he's dead, I have news for you. He's more alive now than he ever has been because he's experiencing the reward that his creator has bestowed upon him. We want to preface that by you understanding that it's the belief of the Boyer family that that is the case. It's my belief, and I sincerely believe every word I say concerning that. And there's another thing I want to say in light of that. Part of point number one, I guess, if you would call it. Yes, we're grieving, and yes, we're sad. And yes, our hearts are broken. But to the Boyer family, this is also a celebration. Because on that horrible day, what was definitely, no doubt, the worst day of their life, Officer Boyer heard the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. On that note, I want to say one last thing, and that's this. And I believe I speak on behalf of the Lord himself when I say this as a minister of the gospel. As the whole world is watching, we want you to understand one thing. When you come against the police, you come against God. If you come against the law enforcement, you come against that which God has ordained to protect, and you are fighting God himself. If that means you come against law enforcement by being the element on the street of evil that they contact every day, you are coming against God. If you are writing legislation that comes against the police, you are coming against God. And we stand here to proclaim that to you today. Because as you're about to hear throughout this whole time, God has and will use this for not, a, not only his glory, but to stand by the side in the help of his ministers. You men and women that are faithfully out on the streets, serving and protecting, and we are grateful for you. So with that, I want to introduce to you my pastor, Pastor Jeff Johnson. He's a senior pastor of Calvary Chapel Downey. He's been a police chaplain for the better part of three decades. And he loves you with all of his heart, and he would like to open up in prayer. And after that opening in prayer, we're going to have a special song by uh, our worship leader here at Calvary Chapel Downey. And then I'll introduce our, our first speaker. Wow, thanks for that introduction. Welcome to Calvary Chapel of Downey. Um, what's sad about this is this is not the first time we've had something like this. And uh, we need to continue to uh, pray for the government and, uh, you know, whoever the powers that be, uh, get us some law and order going on here. And... Uh, and like James said, you guys are ordained of God. You're ministers. I don't know if anybody ever shared Romans 13 with you, but you are ministers of God. You were called by God to be doing what you're doing. So what a privilege. What an honor to be a part of this awesome show of love. You guys are so patient and, and so understanding and so in order, it, it, it's just neat to see, but the support here is over the top for the Boyer family. It's awesome. And I know it always has been and will always be. It's a great support to the family, to the friends, and I know to you fellow officers, it's a blessing to know that, you know, especially the Whittier Police Department who lost a loved one our condolences. In, for, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 and 3 and 4, he says there, Paul writing to the, those in Corinth, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us 
in all our tribulations, no matter what it might be, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble as we serve and protect by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we come at an hour where we need comfort. And it's good to comfort one another, but, oh, to get the comfort from our Creator, our God. What a blessing. We pray for every officer in here to have ears to hear what you're saying this day. That we'll be attentive to your presence because you are here. And that, Lord, you would be with those that are troubled by what is going on in our nation and in our world today. Those maybe who have frustration, those who have definitely some anger, and Lord, I, I thank you for what you did on the Sea of Galilee. You just came out of that situation in the midst of that storm, and you said, Shalom, and that storm was calm. So there's storms in hearts today that you would speak your Shalom, your peace to those who need it today. That's, that's what we're looking for, just peace in our own lives and, and peace in our cities, peace in hearts that are needed so much. We pray for this service, that it will be used nationally, locally, and that you will be glorified in and through everything that is said, everything that is done, that, Lord, you will speak loud at this time. And, Lord, we pray for the family. We pray that you will give them strength for today. It's a long day. Give them that supernatural spirit that come up here and say, God, pour out your spirit upon them and speak to us through their testimony, through their lives. And thank you for the hope of tomorrow. We know that Keith is not lost. He's with the Lord in heaven. Thank God. And we pray for your loving presence, Lord, to bring us a message of hope and a message of salvation to all who are here who are watching on live stream and with those here this morning thank you father for this husband this father this friend and this brother who fought the good fight and is now in your presence May we follow his example, Keith's example, so we can be reunited with him again. And thank you, Jesus, for saying thank you for letting us know that there is no greater love than to lay down to give his own life for his friends. And thank you, last of all, again, for your presence in this place, because he is here. And he is here to work a wonder that only he can do. And for your presence is fullness of joy. So, Lord, give us that godly joy as we look to you for comfort. In Jesus' name, amen.
is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus plans my destiny. Introduce Chief Jeff Piper from Whittier Police Department, and he has some words that he wants to share with all of you. Chief. Good morning. On behalf of the Whittier Police Department family, I want to thank you for not only celebrating Chief's life with us today, <clears throat> but for your incredible and wavering support while we grieve and try to make sense of our tragic loss. I cannot find the words to adequately describe the magnitude of our loss, which transcends Keith's family, the entire law enforcement community, and his friends. Keith grew up in Whittier, graduated from Lucerna High School in 1981. He began his career at the Whittier Police Department in the mid-1980s as a reserve officer, and in, 1990, in 1989, rather, he was hired as a dispatcher. One year later, Keith became a full-time police officer. During his tenure, Keith worked a host of special assignments, including crime impact officer, SWAT officer, field training officer, traffic officer, school resource officer, and a canine handler on a task force. In his uh, nearly 27 years as a police officer, Keith remained completely committed to his profession, his co-workers, and the communities of Whittier and Santa Fe Springs. To his co-workers, Keith was a mentor, an officer all employees respected, admired, and trusted. 
His knowledge was vast and an opinion was sought after. To the communities he served, Keith was a professional, honest, and ethical officer. He had a profound impact on hundreds of students, parents, and faculty at Larsona High School during his tenure as a school resource officer. <clears throat> I'm also confident he had a similar yet different impact on the motoring public during his tenure as a traffic officer. But no matter what he did, Keith was the consummate professional. There's an overwhelming consensus from his co-workers that Keith was Mr. Positive. He never let the job, the stress, the general law enforcement public scrutiny influence his demeanor or verbal support for the community, department, or its members. Keith had a gift to see and deal with which the public could only imagine. He simply loved his job, he loved his co-workers, and he loved his community. If there was one word to describe Keith, it would be humble. During his tenure, Keith received numerous written acknowledgments and commendations for exemplary service. But that is only for situations we as a department found out about. For you see, Keith's compassion for his community was expressed many times throughout his actions, yet he sought no public or department acknowledgement. He simply did it because that's who Keith was. I'd like to share one incident the department did find out about. A couple years ago, Keith was investigating uh, an incident where he quickly learned a young girl was struggling with a relationship with her parents, matters of self-esteem and confidence. Spending quality time with her, Keith learned of the young girl's strength in writing and encouraged her to enter a writing contest at school. However, the suggestion was concerning to her because she, if she won, she would have had to read what she wrote to everyone. Keith promised her that if she won, he would attend with, quote, backup to support her. Well, she won, and during the ceremony, as promised, Keith showed up with several other officers from Whittier PD. A certificate of achievement was presented to her, as well as a special package of gifts from the department. Keith presented these items on stage at the ceremony and delivered a stirring message of inspiration, compassion, and encouragement. This is who Keith was, day in and day out. Aside from work, Keith had an affinity for music. His level of professional ability on the drums allowed him to play with many talented groups several of those members I have met recently. Keith also played several times with not-so-talented groups, <laughs> typically the ones I played guitar in. <laughs> Sorry, Mike Carson sitting down there. Uh, but uh, I'll never forget one of the first times myself, a retired officer Michael Carson and uh, Keith jammed with one of our mutual friends, Jeff Piazza, at Jeff's house. Although at the time Keith was into classic rock, we talked him to playing some rockabilly and country music. And while Keith's drumming was fantastic, uh, Jeff and I could not help Michael out with the backup vocals, which were desperately needed because frankly we stunk. <clears throat> we couldn't sing at all. But to our surprise, Keith stopped drumming and says, you know what, give me a backup mic and I'll do it. And of course I was laughing because I was thinking, one, you can't sing. And two, you definitely can't sing and play drums at the same time because I could barely play guitar and sing at the same time. But not only could Keith sing, he was harmonizing with Michael. Actually, kind of sounded better than Michael. Sorry, Michael. Uh, on the country song he barely knew. And I just remember looking at everybody's faces. We were in shock, disbelief, and excitement. And we had a lot of fun with Keith. He's an extremely talented and a gifted person. And while Keith had his family at work, he also had his family at home. And to Don Joshua... Don, Nancy, Joshua, Joseph, Ashley, and Chris, thank you for sharing Keith and allowing us to know him as you knew him. As a son, father, and grandfather, I'm confident Keith shared his values and love through his actions and words. Although Keith was taken too early, please know that the department family is your family and will always be there for you. Keith's memory will live forever in the halls of our department and in the minds of everyone who knew him. For you see, Keith is a hero and heroes never die. They live forever. Keith would tell us not to be sad, for he's in a better place. He's playing drums with the most magnificent band imaginable. Godspeed, Keith, my brother in law enforcement, and my friend.
Thank you, Chief. Those were uh, very kind words, and I remember you first addressing everybody uh, several days ago, and I was really touched by the things that you said. It's uh, very obvious that uh, your heart is reaching out and that you love your troops, so we thank you for that. Um, little fact that the chief mentioned, and probably something worth mentioning right now, uh, is the fact that Keith, yes, is a man after my own heart, because as a drummer, I can always appreciate another drummer, and his, um, his mom had come up to me, his mom and dad, they, they came to me and they said, hey, James, is there any way we could, you know, have a, a band to play so that people can hear the drums being played, because he was a drummer, and so we had the band played, and then earlier today, um, which I was so blown away by, I was approached by a member of the Wrigley family, um, yes, the famous Wrigley family, who uh, went on to tell me that that drum set right there, the stack of drums, the, the red drums right there, um, was actually being given to the Boyer family, and it was actually a drum set that was played by Ringo. So um, just to show appreciation uh, for, uh, for Keith and for his family. So uh, what an amazing uh, fact there, and uh, what a special man who, uh, who really impacted a lot of people. So uh, next I want to introduce Officer Mike Carson, who of course is a very, very close friend of Keith, and he has some things he'd like to share. Who have been asked to say a few words about Keith. Keith and I have been friends for over 30 years. We worked together, played in a band together, and even went on a blind date together. <laughs> Not with each other. <laughs> 20 years ago, Keith and I were partners on the Crime Impact Team. This is where I really got to know Keith. The third member on our team, who was our supervisor, was Sergeant Steve Francis. The Crime Impact Team was a plainclothes unit that was tasked with a multitude of assignments. Keith and I spent many long days, many long nights together on surveillance, search warrants, and other duties. Keith was the kindest, sweetest, most gentle man you'd ever meet. There wasn't a mean bone in his body. And Keith was constantly being teased, sometimes by me, mostly by Sergeant Francis, and he took it all in stride. Now, Sergeant Francis is a rather large man with blonde hair, so I called him Skipper, which meant I called Keith Gilligan. <laughs> Don't ask what they called me. Keith never complained, even if it meant working beyond his shift. He was the ultimate team player, always willing to help out wherever he could. Unless you were a close friend of Keith's like I was, you'd never know if he had any personal struggles, for he never brought that to work. But if you had a personal problem, he'd be the first one to listen and lend support. He showed up to work with a smile every day and left work with a smile every day. And like Chief Piper mentioned, uh, Chief Piper and I have been playing in a band together for 23 years. Keith played drums for us for, us for a short period. He was one heck of a drummer. And yes, he did harmonize with me. I couldn't believe a sweet voice could come out of that mouth. <laughs> uh, Keith was a bit of a nerd. Uh, he was a big nerd. I have so many funny stories I could tell about Keith, but I'd like to share just one. Uh, we were issued new tactical handheld radios, which were different than the radios that patrol carried. So Sergeant Francis, or I'll call him Steve if you don't mind, uh, decided he wanted to test out these new radios. Well, I was busy on another assignment, so Steve and Keith drove in separate unmarked cars to the Whitwood Mall, which is in the east end of town. The mall was uh, undergoing a complete makeover, so there weren't any tall buildings. So Steve tells Keith, hey, stay in your car in the lot, I'm going to drive around and let's test out the range of these radios. Well, what Keith didn't know was Steve drove about 50 yards behind where Keith was parked and hid behind a dumpster. And he then gets out of his car so he can see Keith. He says, okay, Keith, I'm westbound on Whittier Boulevard. How do you copy? Loud and clear, Sarge. Okay, Keith, I'm at five points. How do you copy? Loud and clear, Sarge. All right, Keith, I'm at the 605 freeway now. Man, you're moving fast, but I hear you perfectly. <laughs> Steve says, okay, I'm northbound on the 605 freeway. Keith says, Minnie's radios are great. It's like you're right here. <laughs> Steve says, I'm now westbound on the 60 freeway approaching downtown Los Angeles. 
And Keith says, I hear you fine. And Steve says, yeah, you know, you're, 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 you're kind of breaking up. You're a little scratchy. Are you still in your car? Yeah. Well, get out of your car. So Keith gets out of his car. How's that? And uh, Steve says, well, you're still a little scratchy. Why don't you turn to your right a little bit? So Keith lights up a cigarette because he used to smoke back then. He turned to his right. He says, how's that? Steve says, yeah, not much better. You know, why don't you hold the radio up in the air a little bit? <laughs> so Keith holds it up like this. He says, how's that, Sarge? <laughs> Steve says, you know, hold it a little higher. So he holds it a little higher. How's that? Hold it as high as you can. So Keith's on his tippy toes, raising his thing up there. <laughs> says, how's that, Sarge? Steve says, you know, it's not much better. Try putting the radio in your left hand. Okay. So he puts the radio in his left hand, the cigarette in his right hand, says, ah, wait a minute. Well, Steve is rolling. He can't take it. So he comes out from behind the dumpster, and Keith turns around and says, no, man. So I tell you this story not to make fun of Keith, but to tell you what a trooper he was, and that he would do anything that was asked of him. Uh, where am I? Excuse me. You know, if you work this job long enough, like I did, like Keith did, like so many of you out there have, it can change you. It can make you callous. It can make you bitter. It can make you numb. Not Keith. He loved his job. The opportunity to help people in his community excited him. I never heard him use profanity. I never heard him use a racial slur. He judged no one and friended everyone. He was one special kind of man. He really knew how to have fun and live life. Oh, I'd like to close with this one brief story. I used to carry a lunch bag to work, filled with snacks, because I was always eating. But when the three of us would work surveillance, the unmarked car I drove had a foot switch on the floorboard. You step on the foot switch and it would key the radio microphone so I could speak to my partners. Well, it never failed. Every time we were parked somewhere, watching someone, waiting for someone, I would accidentally step on the foot switch while going through my bag. Keith would always come on the radio and say, God dang it, Carson, you stop making so much noise with that darn bag. So one last time, this is for you, Keith. Thank you. Some good people he surrounded himself around. <laughs> I'd be scared to be your partner, I just gotta say that. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, those are great words. Um, so right now I'm gonna ask uh, Keith's children to come on up, they're gonna do a special song. Uh, that's gonna be Joshua, Joey, and Ashley, and Ashley's husband Mike on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you guys are coming up and setting up, I'll, I'll share an interesting fact. Um, when I was honored, when I had the honor of being asked to officiate the ceremony, I immediately called up some of my friends over at Whittier and I said, uh, hey, can I get in a unit for a little while? So I hopped in a unit and uh, spent some time with the guys. And um, one of the first things I, I told the sergeant that I was with, I said, hey, Dom, is there any way we can go over to my wife's school? Because my wife is a, is a teacher at East Whittier Unified, my wife, Nicole. And so we, uh, we dropped by there for a second and I was blown away. Um, yes, I mean, to see my wife, yes, but I was blown away more so um, to look at the fence of that school and to see what looked like thousands of blue ribbons. And I asked my wife, I said, babe, what is that? She said, this is what these kids are doing to show their support to the police department. And I think that that's an incredible thing. Uh, the Whittier Police Department is loved, yes. So for any of for any of, for those of you, any of you that are not law enforcement and you're listening to this, do what you can to show your appreciation to these men and women who every day are giving of their lives for us, right? Um, we talk about sacrifice all the time. We talk about the ultimate sacrifice and we're sad when we talk about that, but these men and women are sacrificing sacrificing every single day, just like Keith did for the better part of 27 years. And it's always a good thing to show them um, your appreciation. So you're about to experience a real treat. These guys are amazing. And so I hope that you'll be blessed by what they're going to share. Love 
personal friends with this family. And a uh, little fact that they won't tell you, I'm sure you can already tell by seeing Joey in his uniform, he, like his father, all of these children, like their father, have dedicated their lives to full-time service to their God. And uh, Joey, of course, serves in the Navy. He's assigned to the pediatrics unit over there with the, with the medics and uh, just an amazing young man. If you get to talk to him, I, I told him, I go, man, God is already doing extraordinary things with you and he's going to continue. And uh, I know that Josh and his wife, Emma, they're just amazing people. And Ashley and Mike, uh, all in full-time ministry, all serving as um, youth pastors or worship leaders. And it is amazing to see how God is, uh, continues to use them and has as they've been serving. And man, can they sing. Isn't that amazing? What a blessing. So now we've got a video tribute. And uh, then after that, I'm going to have... Those same children come on up, and uh, without my introduction, they don't need it. They're going to come up, and they're going to eulogize their father. And I know that that's going to be a special time. So let's watch the video.
my great privilege to introduce to you again Ashley, Joshua, and Joey. And uh, I'm just so proud of them. And the words that I know that they share, I think, are going to bring more comfort to you. Um, and so I would encourage you to pay attention to what they have to say. Come on up, you guys. We're really honored to have you. Joseph Wayne Boyer, and I would like to start off by uh, thanking the Whittier Police Department and the LAPD. Um, they've been amazing these past two weeks. Without them, all this wouldn't be possible. Um, just one example of uh, how they've been supporting us this past two weeks. They lent us Officer Steve Garcia and Officer David Chang, who are now in addition to the Boyer family. They've been with us this whole time, and they've been nothing but amazing. We love you guys. We love you guys. It's hard to put into a few sen sentences all that I have to say about my father. My father was kind. He was so nice and friendly to everyone that he met, always greeting them with a hello and a smile and always thinking of others before himself. My father was courageous, not only in his final moments, but always. He had no problem going on some random car chase or calling in some incident in the station when he was off duty. <laughs> it was like he always had his uniform on. And don't get me wrong, he knew how to separate work from family. But he, he always carried himself as a police officer, always on the ready, always looking for danger three steps ahead, always ready to make the ultimate sacrifice. We knew as kids growing up what our father did and the risk, but my dad never showed fear. He did not hate his job. In fact, he absolutely loved his job. Anytime he got hurt and had to be put on desk duty, he was so down. And not because he was hurting from physical pain, but because he wanted to get back in the field. And that's who he was. A man who loved his job. A hero. A guardian. A friend. A son. And a great father. My dad was goofy. <laughs> and I mean the definition of dad jokes. He would always tell corny jokes and ridiculous pickup lines everywhere he went. One of his favorites was, are you a parking ticket? Cause you got fine, fine, fine written all over you. <laughs> but that was him. <laughs> he was trying to bring a smile to everyone and he did. And I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty embarrassing growing up with a man who kept fake gag teeth at the ready just for his sense of humor in his car. I'm not lying. But one of the funniest things my dad did in life is he always sneezed three times. Three! Never four, never two, three. And me and my brother would count him out every time he sneezed. One, two, and wait for that pause. And three, there it is. My dad pushed me in life to succeed. He taught me all about life and how the things I dreamed of doing as a kid aren't so realistic sometimes. He taught me to always have a backup plan, A, B, C, all the way to Z. To think before I speak. To always say please and thank you. To be kind and courteous to others. To not judge people because you do not know their situation to be courageous, to try new things, to love, to laugh, and to forgive. My dad raised me in the faith of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through my faith with God, I have learned many great lessons. I have struggled with my faith, especially this last year. 
but God has always had a plan. After my father passed, I started to see that plan. Seeing this community, the state of California, and everyone across the nation showing their love and support has been overwhelming. Never in my life have I seen such love and community come together and support such a cause. And I have been extremely blessed and honored by all the cards from schools, the people sending flowers and food, and seeing so many people being affected by my father. And it's all from God. At the time I should be hurting most, God has given me peace. Knowing my father, Keith Wayne Boyer, is up there in heaven right now. And I've heard this saying growing up many times, and you might know it as well. But it goes something like this. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is, is good. good. Amen. And it is so true. God has given me the strength to forgive me to this. To me, it is not a man who did this, but the evil of this world. This man was just a face. He is lost in his life, and I pray one day he soon finds himself in change for the better. And I wish this for all the world who lost or lost and need to find the light. Because God always has his light on. We just need to search for it. I am extremely proud of my father. And proud to see how many lives he touched. I hope... I can be such a man one day and have such an amazing send-off like my father's had. I love you, Dad. I'm going to miss you. Thank you all once again for being here, and God bless. Hello, my name is Joshua Keith Boyer. And I want to share with you all some stories of a man who, in my opinion, had more integrity than anyone I've ever known or met. But he was also the goofiest man I knew. So just two days ago, my siblings and I were trying to get into his personal safe, and so we called Locksmith. And long story short, we ended up having to drill into the back of his safe to get it open. And so after about an hour of working on the safe, because not only did we have to get in the safe, we had to get into the metal box in the safe. Thanks, Dad. Uh, we're expecting to find important documents, his life secrets, a pot of gold, we don't know. My dad was a very private man. Um, we pull out some important papers, and then we pull out this old cardboard box, and we're thinking to ourselves, this is it. The secrets are about to be revealed. <laughs> is it his diary? Is it his will? What mysteries are in this box? <laughs> we open the box, and I kid you not, we start pulling out his magic secrets. Like literally, magic tricks. <laughs> like all the ones he kept from us throughout the years that he did never wanted to reveal. The fluffy red ball and the cup trick, about two dozen magic decks, the works. And so we pull that out and then in the safe is more magic tricks. It just keeps coming out. And I'm like, Dad, this is what you kept in your safe, magic tricks. I half expected to start pulling on a handkerchief and just keep pulling. But that was my dad. He was a goofball. He loved magic and now I know where I get it from. But aside from his goofiness, I think the most accurate description of Keith Wayne Boyer, it comes from, oddly enough, from, a pro, from the programming world in the form of an acronym called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. When you looked at my father and you asked him a question, he looked right back into your eyes and he gave you a straight answer. I love that about my father. He didn't just talk the talk. He walked the walk. My dad had integrity. When we were kids, my family had gone shopping at a grocery store, as families do, and we had paid for everything, taken all the groceries home, and when we got home and started unpacking everything, my dad noticed that a candy bar had mysteriously slipped its way inside one of the grocery bags, inside one of the grocery bags, by one of his clever children. 
And he knew that that candy bar hadn't been paid for. So at this point, my father drove us all back to the store and we walked up to the cash register and my father proceeds to explain that this candy bar had been taken without being paid. And I could tell that the cash register was not used to seeing such acts of integrity as he looked at my father with a mixture of disbelief and amusement. He couldn't believe that a man would drive 20 minutes home and then 20 minutes back to the store just to return an 80 cent mistake. But I learned something that day though. You can shock people into amazement and wonder by going a little beyond their limit of expectation. My father didn't have to make any grand gesture to prove his worth. All my father did was return a candy bar. And he not only showed integrity to everybody at that store, he taught a life lesson to his children that they would never forget. And that lesson is this. The moments that define you are the ones where not everyone is watching. They are the ones where no one is. It's that moment where no one will tell you off for doing the wrong thing, yet you choose to do the right thing. Those are the moments where our character is shown. And that was the type of man my father was, and he taught us to be like that. I'm going to tell you all that there are times that I don't have the strength to do on my own what I know is right. It's like forgiving the man who committed the acts that brought us here today. I could accept anger into my heart, I could judge him and I could condemn him, and very few in this room would blame me. But my father taught me to choose the right thing, and he brought me up in the way of the Lord. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 says this, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Jesus and his disciples were amazing teachers, as proven by this verse. We cannot come together in unity and love and make this world a better place if we hold on to bitterness and rage and anger and we do not forgive those who wrong us. I know it may seem impossible to forgive the man that did this, but that is why I rely on the strength of the Lord. Jesus gives me strength and hope to move on and forgive and love and be a better person. That is the same Christ my father believed in and is with him now. Love you, Dad. Hello. My name is Ashley. I'm not used to speaking in front of this many people, so bear with me. My dad was the picture of humility, as you guys have seen and heard about over and over and over. He was never one to take credit for his accomplishments, even when others would be rambling on and on about all of the amazing things that they've done. My dad would sit just smiling and nodding, um, not even thinking about what he could say to top that. He would be genuinely listening and caring to anybody that was talking. He was. And my dad had the biggest heart. He had the heart of a servant. He lived to serve others. Not only in his job as a police officer, where he dedicated his life to serve and protect the community, but my dad dedicated his life to serving his family. He always put our needs above his own. He was always there for us. Just a few months ago, I was out here visiting from Utah, and I had a friend that was going to drive back with me. And all of a sudden, she wasn't able to. She had to return. And so, uh, who do you think I called? Called my dad, and I'm like, hey, dad. You know, in that voice that every father, they can recognize the tone. They want something. And he laughs. He's like, hi, sweetheart. What can I do for you? <laughs> what do you need? And I told my dad, I was like, so what do you think about maybe driving me to Utah in, in a day? 
stay in the weekend with us, you know, hang it out. And instead of making excuses and uh, giving me a reasons why it was too short of notice and why he couldn't do it, my dad cleared his schedule. He cleared the entire weekend and he drove me and his granddaughters 10 hours and stayed the weekend with us. And we got to talk, you know, on road trips where you talk about everything that matters and nothing that matters at all. And we spent hours, obviously hours, um, talking about life. And the time that I got with him was so precious. And now I look back on it and will treasure it for the rest of my life, being able to have that time with him so recently. As you guys have heard um, people describing my dad, you've heard the words like, integrity, and courage, and kindness, and humility. If you guys want to know what Jesus looks like, what the heart of Jesus is, just look at my dad. He didn't have to tell us, and he did tell us, he told us about Jesus, but he didn't have to because he showed us with his actions. He showed us through his life who Jesus was. The way he acted, like Josh said, when no one is looking. That's who my dad was all of the time. The Bible says, greater love has no other than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. Nobody can tell me that there is a greater love than somebody who would die for you. But that's what my dad did. And he didn't just die for me and my brothers and my family. He died for our community and the people around him. He laid down his life for us. My dad understood that life wasn't about money or cars or houses or stuff or even religion. He understood that nobody could work their way to heaven, that it's not about us or anything that we can do. He understood that it's about what God's already done for us. He understood the meaning of life. That life is about love. It's about loving God and loving others. And that's it. And my dad did that. That was all that mattered to him. He loved God and he loved others. I'd like to pray with you all before Pastor James comes back up. God, I pray that you would fill us with your spirit, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to us, God, that you would give us strength through this. She would give us peace. She would give us understanding and wisdom, Lord. I pray for all the officers in here that are constantly putting their life on the line for us every day, Lord. I pray that you would anoint them with strength. God, that you would bless them and bless their families, Lord. I pray that you would bless everyone listening to this, God. I pray that you would reveal yourself in a mighty, mighty way to the hearts of everyone here, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you in your name. Amen. As you just heard, Keith left a legacy. I've uh, been given the privilege by this amazing family to be able to share the hope that is within them with you. And so I think that the, the natural question that people are going to ask, I think it's the, the first question that oftentimes people ask, and it's a question, quite frankly, that pastors don't ever like to bring up because they feel like they have to answer the question. But I'll bring it up, and the question is this, why? They gravitate to that question. They gravitate to the question, why would God, if Keith was a servant of God, and was somebody that was committed to God and had a relationship with God, why would God allow something like this to happen? I have an answer for you. I've been thinking about it. I've been praying about it. There's been a lot of thoughts that have been going through my head. 
as a person who's had the privilege of serving as a police chaplain in the